Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so we're ready to go. So thank you for coming this uh, this early. Uh, I hope everybody has uh, their own coffees and ready to uh, learn a little bit about uh, the battle of the distros, uh, which one is uh, the better for my cloud. My name is Edgar Magana. I'm a principal engineer for Cisco. With me, my friend and ex coworker uh, Robert Starmer. Yes, so my name is Robert Starmer. I was also a principal engineer at Cisco. I am now a uh, uh, consultant uh, for OneCloud, uh, working uh, with Cisco fairly closely on a number of these sorts of uh, engagements. So uh, we just have 35 minutes, 40 minutes for this session, and I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of questions. I hope so. So Robert and myself will be available after the, the session outside. Uh, feel free to, you know, if uh, you don't catch us, uh, we can talk later or send emails, etc. So we're going to talk about the battle. Uh, you came here and you see a lot of uh, vendors. And, um, and uh, the battle that I wish I could talk about it is this kind of battle, because these kind of things, I really like it. Um, unfortunately, it's not these kind of battles. We're going to talk about OpenStack. Uh, we're going to talk about few companies, vendors, that are just being created around this uh, beautiful ecosystem. Um, thank you to the power of the cloud. Thank you to the power of open, um, open stack. So when we're talking about vendors, uh, it's kind of like a very complicated uh, topic. Um, this is what I think uh, it's very important for you to know who I am. Uh, so I'm part of the community since 2011, the Santa Clara Summit. I am um, a Neutron Core developer since 2012. I'm still, I like it, love it. Um, I've been working with distribution since uh, they were created. Uh, why? Because I always wanted to run things in the real world. Uh, DevStack is great, but I wanted something else. And um, Robert and myself, we start working on um, how we can actually, actually automate what kind of orchestration tools we found um, to make it simple for us, our development, our testing, and for you, the users, to make it um, uh, to production. Um, so I do not represent any specific vendor or company. Hopefully, um, that's going to be very, very um, um, subjective uh, topic. And um, one of the good things, my current employer, Cisco, doesn't offer any distributions. So if you ever heard about uh, Cisco and the stack starter, it's not really a distribution. So we were going to talk about what is really a distribution. Um, so my goal here is to help you to go to production, uh, to help you to, max, uh, to, to have the best um, uh, choice for your vendor. Or there are two other options. Uh, do it by yourself or just give it away to somebody else. Um, so we have vendors for that as well. Um, so my passion is very simple. It's been open stack science a few years. So with that, um, what are the goals of this session? Well, bummer, but um, I will not tell you which distribution product to use. I'm not going to do your homework. That's going to be yours. Uh, I'm going to give you, uh, so to have a better idea of a few available OpenStack distributions and, approach, uh, and products. Um, so the idea is for you to understand the factors and be aware of uh, when selecting a specific uh, vendor solution, what do you need to know? So I'm going to give you some weapons to use against all those sales guys that will be calling you because they scanned your batch already. Uh, they're going to be sending you emails, and they're going to tell you our solution, our distribution, our product is the best way. So uh, then you're going to start asking questions, and let's see what is their reaction face to face. Um, and I want to wake you up just in case you're still a little bit um, sleepy. So let's try to make it interactive. So I'm going to I'm going to go uh, as fast as possible without uh, mumbling hopefully, um, just to have time for, for questions, right? So the very first thing is to understand what is really a distribution versus a product. What is the difference? And for that, I will ask my friend Robert to, to explain a little bit that. 
Yeah, so the, the reason that Edgar asked, actually asked me to come up here is that uh, what about three years ago, when we first started looking at this space, uh, we ran into the same problem I think all of you guys have, which is you, know, you found uh, that there were great instructions for how to install the specific pieces of OpenStack, do a lot of this stuff manually. There certainly was DevStack even at the time. And we were looking at how you took that, that simple set of tools and the basic configuration that you did manually and turned that into something that you could actually use and repeat whether it was, in our case, a test sort of an environment or in the customers that we were working with in their environments in something that they actually wanted to turn into production. And we found that there were uh, a lot of things that were being called distributions at the time even. Um, mostly it was based on the uh, operating system vendors' stacks, so, so their tool set to actually get an operating system installed, and then taking that to actually get something like OpenStack installed. Um, certainly there was uh, chef-based and then some initial puppet-based work that had gone into building the automation of the, the different individual pieces, and those, those pieces became distributions. Right? So Red Hat had some in initial components along with the Fedora project. Um, certainly there was a lot of work that had co come out of Canonical's environment. These were the distribution class systems. So there was a way to get something up and running, but there wasn't really much beyond the fact that the pieces existed. Kind of like if you deploy Apache with an a Linux distribution, you get a web server, but not a whole lot else. You still have to do the rest of the automation, the rest of the installation of the services. And that's the distribution space. Then there were the vendors that were coming out at the time that said, look, we've actually got a product. We've got something that you can either pay us for support for or actually even buy. Uh, and that's product from the all software pr perspective to even entirely bundled hardware systems. And looking at the two and looking at the difference between the two is, I think, one of the key things that, that Edgar and I kept running into. Well, which do we go? Do we actually get a, a product vendor in to actually start looking at how do we get support from them directly for our individual changes that we needed for the development that we were doing, so the, the work that Edgar was starting up on Neutron, for example, um, versus the sorts of things that we needed to help our internal customers that really wanted to sit on top of the cloud uh, start using. Right? So the, pr the product versus distribution was sort of a question of, do I need somebody to just come in here and help me do something, and I don't really care about the internals, or do I need enough flexibility from sort of a distribution and a distribution plus deployment automation tool set uh, to actually potentially morph the back end a little bit, and tweak the exact so sorts of systems and components that I wanted to use. Right, so that was, I think, something that was very important. And when you guys are looking at this, I think that's one of the key things that we wanted you to take away from this as well, is the, the product systems are great if you're just trying to get to production and have somebody there to effectively hold your hand through the process or even hold your hand into your production environment. Uh, whereas the distribution side of things is definitely something that you can look at if you're really going to have to tweak some of the back ends. Maybe you're building your own product that fits into the OpenStack community uh, or OpenStack ecosystem. Uh, so that's, that's really, I think, the key that we wanted to get across. Right? Thank you. Perfect. So with that, now we know that uh, in the bottom line, the distribution will give you a lot of flexibility, and the products will give you something that is uh, finally done, that you Switch it on should be working um, with some kind of customization that is being created by someone else that is not you, that is not your IT. Um, so we will we will investigate a little bit more about that. So let's um, let's go for the um, for the questions. What are the right questions to ask? Right. So the very first uh, one that you already asked and answered was. Uh, I want to create a cloud management system. Which software should I use? And you all say OpenStack. Thank you. Congratulations. This is why you're here. If not, you are in the wrong conference. Um, so right after that, you should start asking um, the following factors. Um, the kind of the order, it could change. Um, I like to start talking one of the most expensive ones, which is actually the hardware, and the implications with the operating system hypervisors that you will put together. Uh, so this is uh, one of the first um, uh, decisions to make. Then you need to talk about the reference architecture, right? Is this uh, solution product going to give me uh, high availability? This is for production, right? You need to have it. Um, uh, what is the, the process to upgrade it? Uh, as you can see, uh, the software is upgrading too fast. So I, I will uh, deep dive in each one of them. So uh, let's just start with, with the hardware. So um, when you go to uh, most of the products, um, you need to start thinking about what are the hardware 
implications. One of the things that we have in mind as an OpenStack developers is we're creating some kind of software that it will not let you fall into a vendor lock-in. So this is very important that um, you will have the flexibility to choose the hardware that you want to use. Um, however, some of them, they not. They are fully tested and certified for a specific hardware. That could be good for you, because you don't want to run into hardware failures, uncompatibility of drivers, and things like that. So you think about it, you need to start asking those questions, because this is very expensive, and you want to have the flexibility to choose what you want to use, right? Um, other thing that is that's very important is um, uh, nested virtualization. This got tied to uh, the reference architecture. So by now, I hope everybody has in their minds more or less how is the, the default uh, proposed uh, reference architecture from the OpenStack team. We normally have the concept of these um, controller, compute nodes, network nodes, et cetera, right? So there are, there are certain components that they don't really need to run in bare metal. So think about it when you talk to one of these um, vendors. Ask about this. Try to see the reactions. Some of them, they don't even know. So um, I'm just going to let it there. I'm not going to say specific which one of them. Uh, but you can ask me later after the room. Um, certifications is, is it's, it's good. Uh, it's good to have. It doesn't guarantee that you will not run into failures. It's just, it's just a tag, to be honest. It's just a tag, put it for another vendor in a different vendors to create a partnership and to make, uh, to make business together. But doesn't mean that actually it's not going to run into any failure. But it does mean that a set of certified tests were running into that hardware. So think about it. Which kind of tests? Mostly 50% uh, of them are tested by one of those specific uh, vendors, and the other tests are actually the tests that the OpenStack community created. So that is great. Um, Robert, is there something else that I'm missing? No, just, no just, I think just you, this, this one I think you've covered pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th th this, is, this is very important, guys. I mean, uh, hardware and, and, and the parent system. Why? Why the parent system? Because you may choose a Linux flavor, but the Linux flavor will have another complications. You have also ESXi, you have Hyper-B. So all those cost money and support. And start making the math. So I want you to start thinking how much it's going to cost you the data center, because it's actually uh, the homework that you will be uh, doing. I'm, I'm pretty sure most of the people attending this is because uh, they're having in their minds to build this. And they need to report back to somebody else uh, what's going to be the process. I guess the one the one thing I would comment on that though is um, <clears throat> this this connection between the hardware and the operating system and then the OpenStack middleware that sits on top is actually important, uh, especially if if you're looking at uh, uh, specifically a the sort of a distribution class uh, system. So something that might actually even be at the product level where you actually have a company that's going to support the entire deployment of the system on top of the hardware. Um, it just being x86 hardware doesn't necessarily mean that the hardware vendor can support the, the platform or the product of OpenStack or version of OpenStack that acts more like a product uh, that sits on top of it. So it is actually probably good to make sure that uh, when you say, hey, I'm going to take a specific Linux distribution or basically a productized version of a Linux distribution with the OpenStack pieces on top, and I want to run it on what looks like generic x86 hardware, make sure that there isn't an interaction on the storage driver front, on the network interface driver front. Uh, these are, I think, important questions to ask at the hardware level. So let's, let's, let's um, move on. Let's go to the next one, reference architecture, high availability. Um, you need to start asking what is the HE model. And the HE model is for many things, right? For the hardware itself, right? Uh, your core uh, switches should have some redundancy. Your actually uh, open extract components should have some redundancy. And um, unfortunately for, uh, for you, um, us, developers, the we have uh, different silos for each one of these uh, uh, components, Nova, Neutron, Cider, and the HM models are a little bit different between them. So be sure you actually have um, uh, somebody behind you helping you to understand all these models. Or even better, try to understand all these models by yourself and try to make the, the, the reference uh, HA architecture very compatible with what you in your IT operations team are uh, familiar with. 
uh, it's uh, it's very disruptive for a company to uh, move into open source. That's a big change for some of you. Um, now, if you are asking them to actually change the HM model, it's going to be even more disruptive, and um, I'm pretty sure not uh, you're not going to have very um, um, IT guys happy. So th this is very important. Um, try to try to make all these HA components in in a way that they have exactly the same model or very similar model even that is not 100% possible because it's going to be very easy to handle any any troubleshooting um, I'm aware of some uh, some companies, some products out there that actually have a very good, crazy HA model. Uh, the question that I will have for them is that model easy to troubleshoot, easy to debug? Uh, think about it when you have um, every single uh, server in your distribution uh, as a controller, the monologue that you may have. Um, so just be aware of uh, the implication of that HA model, right? Just. Um, um, the typical active active um, uh, with even three controllers uh, is one of the most popular, I would say. And um, you can also try to ask the people who is already running in production if that is uh, good enough. So my only comment on the high availability side of things is that um, it's probably interesting to look at high availability within a single region or uh, a single system that gets deployed. So basically the physical hardware plus the control plane that sits on top of it. And we've done a lot of work uh, together in the past looking at both active standby models. That was the first model. We actually helped also build out a, a version of an installation uh, tool set for uh, or an active, active, active uh, control plane environment. Um, one of the interesting things I've, I'm seeing more people look at as well is multi-region high availability. So if the applications that sit on top can actually deal with failure, if they're built sort of in a web scale model, um, then you can actually look at regional controllers. So you can actually get rid of the high availability component at the control level and assume that the application can actually deal with failure at the single system level, right? So it's another area to look at uh, as, you're, as you're deciding what the right process is and pathway is for your actual particular deployment. Right. And remember, I mean, most of the distributions will let you design the HA model with your team versus the products that they will tell you this is the model, and that's it. Because what? Because it's a product. So the next, the next one is the code um, upgrades and scalability. I mean, this is critical. I mean, uh, we have nine releases of OpenStack. Um, we keep releasing a new version every six months. Um, I'm so happy to have this this model. Uh, so this is a very straight and uh, simple question. Uh, will your solution be able to be upgraded to the next version of OpenStack every six months, yes or not? What is going to be the thing that is going to take me to do that? It's my, my cloud is going to be down, or it's going to be keep running 24-7? Um, so why is it so important to keep upgrading your OpenStack distribution? Because uh, think about it, I mean, uh, the amount of uh, code, uh, bug fixing, and new features that is uh, added every six months is, is huge. The community, you, you say it around, right? 4,500 uh, 4, uh, uh, 4, uh, uh, attendees to this uh, summit. It's incredible. Um, for the people who is going to be hanging around on this, on this floor, there will be a lot of the design some sessions. And um, you will see how many developers will be in for each one of these components. So don't lose that uh, advantage. Uh, and try to go for that kind of solution that is uh, up to date. I cannot imagine that you're thinking about a deploying a cloud in the next three months with something grisly, older, even Habana. I would try to encourage you to go as 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 as, as moving forward as high as house as possible, which because we even internally try to uh, enhance the 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 software to make it easier to upgrade. So if you get in the past, it's going to be harder for you to move to the future. But if you're already in the present or even looking ahead, it's going to be simpler. Uh, so I really encourage you to ask that question. So um, one of the experiments that I did was to uh, uh, surf in the uh, distributions, products, websites, and very few of them tell you exactly which OpenStack distribution they are running, which release, sorry. And that's amazing. When I start digging a little bit more, there were so many 
rounds, rounds, rounds of the things that they didn't really clearly uh, tell me what was the what was the answer. So be very straightforward and ask um, how much it's going to cost uh, to do that upgrade. And the second part is the scalability. Um, do not get locked in one cluster cloud and that's it. Uh, some of them they do it like that, and they claim that uh, in order to make a scalability, you can actually create a federated cloud and make some connection and some crazy stuff. Uh, be sure that you have the availability to start adding computes, even controllers, uh, etc. that you think that you will scale up in the next um, 12 months or, or 16 months, etc. Uh, one other factor is zones. So, uh, as you um, uh, probably you're familiar with this uh, this uh, um, term in the compute area that you can create your own zones and you can actually uh, schedule uh, VMs on those zones. Um, so, be able to create multiple zones. This is a very good feature. Uh, I will encourage you to actually have a solution that will let you to create them zones. So, there, this you have another questions uh, to ask uh, to the to the vendors. So again, I'd, I'd add another comment about this. When you think about upgrades, I think this actually maps pretty well also with the way you think about high availability. Um, I've worked with a number of folks that have actually tried to upgrade systems that are single system environments. And while it's getting better and better, uh, some of the Nova comments about how the, the Nova team is dealing with uh, database upgrades and migrations and even interactions between the different, uh, different components of, of the, the Nova system, when you start thinking about managing those upgrades, uh, um, if you can build a high availability system that actually is effectively two separate environments, uh, and, unless, again, a, a product company might have a better way of actually managing that because they've built some, some of their own effectively specialization on the back end to support those upgrades, if you actually think about your high availability environment as two separate systems and can build out two separate systems, um, you actually have a way to basically do sort of a flip-flop upgrade where you migrate all of your users to one system, upgrade the other, and then migrate back. Uh, it's just one model to, to think about when you're looking at how can you leverage, you know, especially if you decide to go the distribution route where maybe you have a little bit more ownership of the system that you're deploying, how do you actually leverage these environments? So just get another thing to, to keep in the back of your mind. So the next one is one of my favorites because uh, so, many, uh, so many people did just forget about the licensing. And the licensing is um, it's a little bit complicated because you need to start asking, uh, are you going to be paying for server, per socket, per subscription base? And then you're going to be paying for the hardware. You're going to be paying for the distribution itself, for the support. Um, what about the grades? Are you going to be paying for the grades? They may ask you to pay for that. Why you have to pay for that with something that we are trying to make it as simple as possible? So do not fall into those traps, <laughs> you actually should be um, um, having um, a solution that not going to be adding pennies for every single thing that you want to run. Uh, this is very important. Um, e, uh, installation deployment, it's, uh, when you have a product, it should be very simple to install, it should be very straightforward. Uh, however, you need to be sure that it's not going to be an added, any added cost. Um, with a distribution, you have more flexibility in that area, so you can manage more, more the cost. But um, but one of the things that you can you can have a problem with the distribution is that you just start pulling many things from different places. Maybe you're calling in more than two, three vendors, and all of them they want to make money, right? So be sure that at the end of the day, what you start doing all your math, don't end up paying more. Some of the distributions claim to have um, a lot of compatibility with all the components through what they call the enterprise uh, version, right? So just, just think about it, how much more it's going to be for each one of these enterprise licenses, right? And, um, and um, if you are really looking into uh, a distribution in this case, um, try to explore the alternatives. Try to explore the, um, the operating systems or the, or, the, or the flavors that will not cost you money, right? Um, try to ask this question. Let's say, for instance, to the real guys, to the SUSE guys, what is really the difference between um, uh, what is called RHOS versus uh, the RDO? 
right? That's a very important question because um, you can just go live with the uh, RDO, maybe running in CentOS or, or something else. Maybe you're good enough. But maybe you want to have all the supports that REL is going to guarantee you and you want to go that. I'm not telling you which one to use. Again, I'm telling you the factors that you need to ask in order to make a decision. Um, another very important thing, I mean, creating a cloud, a new cloud with OpenStack, it's a very amazing trip. Uh, make sure you do it in phases. Make sure you start with your POC. Make sure you go to your pre-production um, racks. Make sure that you have all these phases in place and make sure that it's not gonna cost you more money than what you were expected to have. Right, so the idea is you go to production, you wanna test your product. So I just wanna have for free, or I just don't want to pay more that is gonna cost me at the end of the day. Again, just ask for those kind of questions. Um, if there is some extra components that you wanna add, and you're, it, it's flexible enough to add more components, what's gonna be the, the support model for those, those, those ones? And uh, in a little bit, we're gonna be talking about those support models. Yeah, so the only other thing I would say in terms of uh, considering cost models, you know, it's not just the software that you have to consider. If you're th looking at the, the cost of deploying a system, you can look at the hardware, hardware cost and licensing and support costs. You can look at the operating system licensing and support costs. Um, again, if you're looking at the sort of the product model for, for OpenStack deployment, that may actually include all of that wrapped together, right? So it might actually include the, the physical hardware plant, the, the software that's being run there, the management software that they may add uh, from a product perspective perspective to make it easier to manage this. And I think one of the key things that's going to drive the, the decision making here is, are you looking to operate a cloud or are you looking to build and develop something within that cloud space? That's going to be a large factor in driving what the right potential distribution or, or, or platform is to actually go, go forward with. And with that, we move into the next one. Uh, I love this one, plugins and drivers. Why? Because uh, we create OpenStack such a way that is fully compatible with the number of vendors. And um, your solution, your distribution, your product should be compatible with them as well. So the question that you should ask is, how flexible is the solution if I want to use uh, plugin X for Neutron and plugin Y for Nova? Or any kind of combination that you want to use because it's the solution that you have in mind. Um, Think about this, um, some, of the, some of the solutions are not compatible or tested or, or even talking between different kind of vendors. Uh, for good or for bad, uh, you need to be aware of those things and you need to be asking um, when is that going to be possible. Um, Again, uh, OpenStack is very flexible, right? Don't lose that flexibility. Uh, so let me select any storage uh, backend system. Let me select my messaging system. Let me select the kind of database that I already have in IT operation. Whether you have uh, something that you are really running in your system as a vendor, but in your IT team are very familiar with something, don't, don't, don't create um, a crazy environment just because uh, the vendors are not letting you do it. So we're building something to be flexible don't lose that flexibility. And very important, I I don't know, I run the POC, I found out a uh, bunch of bugs because of the messaging system, so I change my mind and I want to change to the other messaging system. Is that possible? How much is going to be? Uh, how much in time, uh, processes, uh, resources, etc. So think about it that. Um, there is, um, there are actually plenty of drivers plugins around there. I found uh, Mirantos recently uh, post uh, a very nice uh, resource tool to actually find out all of them. So you go to that link, uh, stylistic.com uh, stylistic drive log, you will see uh, a very nice uh, web page that you can actually select um, the specific uh, OpenStack component and all the plugins drivers available uh, there. Uh, it's very cool and actually tells you uh, uh, the testing part and, and a lot of bunch a bunch of information that you may not aware. So I encourage you to look at this website. Um, uh, recently, today, actually two days ago, it was uh, the build the OpenStack marketplace. This is a great place to actually find um, also drivers. What is what is available there? Um, one of the things that is very, very important if you are going to use one of these plugins because you want to talk to that company. Make sure that that code, that code is upstream. Do not 
select and ask my advice, do not select a product which their specific driver plugin is not pushed upstream. It's very important because there is a process, there is code quality, there are some testings that needs to be passed, and if there is a reason why, you have to ask those person, why you plug in, why your driver, why your piece of software that you're trying to put with OpenStack is not pushed upstream. Everything should be pushed upstream. You should ask for those kind of things. If somebody's not pushing upstream, you can actually you can actually go to the review.openstack.org and find out what are the comments of the developers. And you will find out exactly the truth. So I encourage you to go there. Um, so this is, this is very critical because OpenStack is all about this. And if you don't have the full visibility, you may lose very cool uh, features that you want to offer to your users, to your IT operations guy. So an, another way to think about this as well, especially if you have a hardware platform that you have to use, so maybe you have a, a corporate set of requirements that's driving a specific set of tools, um, obviously each of those individual vendors, uh, potentially on the storage array side of things, um, uh, network services side of things, something along those lines, are going to have different sets of capabilities. Um, it's probably important to consider what those capabilities are, what out of those platforms it is that you're looking to hopefully incorporate into the OpenStack environment, and make sure that the vendor is willing to actually support the whole path of, of either getting, like, like Edgar is saying, getting the driver uh, enabled for that particular set of features, pushing that code back upstream into the community so that everybody can benefit from the enablement of that capability, um, at least seeing how somebody else might actually implement the interaction. For example, on a storage path, how do you actually create a volume and delete a volume, right? A lot of that work has gone into the community and is leverageable by everybody, um, but we're also, it, it's also, I think, important to look at how it goes the other way, right? How can you actually make sure that the support exists for those low-level components that you actually either have to or might want to use in your environment. So let's go to the next one. Customer support and documentation. Um, a very important question to ask. Uh, what is going to be the customer support model? Uh, it's really the support 24-7, 365. So you need to investigate about that. I already asked you to ask how much it's going to cost to have these kind of investments. Um, because believe me, you will have issues. No matter what, you will have issues. Uh, it could be a simple configuration issue. It could be a bug that you actually found um, in your testing or ready to go to production. So be sure that the support that you have is not just a guide answering the, the phone call, say, yeah, somebody is going to take a look in that. It has to be further than that. And, um, and there should be some action and reaction plans. You go there, say, okay, you're gonna take your product, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with your distribution. What is your reaction plan if I got a problem Friday night, uh, 6 p.m., 8 p.m., Saturday, 2 a.m.? What's gonna be the reaction plan? Exactly what is the, 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 the person who's gonna be in charge who's gonna be uh, pulling the logs? And now, where the logs are gonna be located, you need to have the plan to say, okay, there was a failure, the, the failure is on the red flag, so uh, the, cl the, the cloud is, is, is almost down, and um, uh, a bunch of people is waking up and is trying to pull logs from every, uh, all different places. Is that the right plan? No, it's not. There should be a very smooth plan to collect the logs, to be in the same place, to not be interrupted with the operation of the cloud, and let um, the expert to, uh, to analyze the problem. Um, when you go to installation deployment, uh, be sure that you can do it by yourself. Be sure that uh, whether it is your decision, you have enough support and documentation to do it by yourself, to replicate whatever they are doing. For us, it's very simple. I mean, sometimes I've just been deploying some of the uh, distros uh, or whatever I can find, and um, after doing two, three times, it's just go natural. And then I skip uh, certain steps, but um, that shouldn't be the case for you. You should be able to reproduce whatever uh, uh, any other person is, is, is putting in your, in your hardware. Um, it's very important to be aware of the code, and this is what I actually put this graph here 
this is just pulled from the statistics again. Um, because, um, again, I'm, I'm not in favor of any company, but what I'm in favor is that the, 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 the people that actually is aware of the code. And in, in this website, you can actually see uh, the contribution by companies and also by people and also by components. So you can actually, if you're very focused and you see that um, one specific component will give you some troubles, you may want to go for uh, one of those uh, uh, companies who has people contributing. It doesn't mean that you need to go to the one that is the top contributor. It just, you just want to be sure that they know what they are doing, that they know the code that they have some people aware of those changes. Um, on the other hand, I'm, I mean, we, uh, as the developers, uh, we like to keep adding code and adding the features. So sometimes we change uh, the tag here. Uh, so th these graphs could change drastically with the time. So be sure that uh, you know the people behind it, not just, just, just the names, uh, not just the tag. And, um, about the documentation, um, I, I ran into some distributions and product where the documentation it was minimal, um, and some of those were, were amazing. I really liked reading documentations uh, from some of them. So I encourage you to don't ask for it. Try to get it from the website, from whatever they, they told you to do it. I take a look on that and, um, and, and see if that is what you're looking for. Yeah, and again, I think from a, the, the concept of support, I think there's a question of are you looking for distribution or platform that um, is something that you need to support directly, in which case I think the case of documentation becomes even more important. How do I get the right documentation if I'm actually going to try to support and operate this environment rather than just build something that we're going to go develop against? Um, I, I think that's, that's probably one of the key things to think about, and especially when you're looking for a, potentially a partner, so either somebody who's going to provide a platform or even a distribution partner Partner, is their support operation going to help you operate that, that cloud for yourself, for your customers directly, right? And this, is, this is tied to the next one. And um, so we're five minutes away, so I want to have time for at least one question. Um, so time to deploy and testing to be sure that you have all the testing tools, all the testing plans in place. Ask for their testing plans. Create your own testing plans. Uh, be sure how, how, how long it's going to take you to deploy the cloud, uh, what is going to be the factors uh, uh, in, involving on these deployments, uh, mostly time constraints. Uh, um, think about when you create these, uh, ecosystem in your cloud and you're pulling different vendors, uh, the more vendors, the longer will take your deployment. Because you need to coordinate different, team, uh, different teams from different uh, geographical distributed areas and um, even with different backgrounds. So um, I'm not telling you don't do it. I'm just telling you just be aware of, of, of those kind of things. And, um, and we're almost done. This is the last one of the factors. But one, one of the things that I want to say uh, to all of you uh, may the open stack be with you. If not, outsourcing will be with you. Uh, what I want to say with this is, uh, if after all this I scare you up, say, no way, I'm not going to invest in the cloud because there are so many things, um, that's a valid one. You may don't have uh, the resources um, in terms of money or people to do it. So there are some other companies around in the marketplace that actually can do, can host everything for you. Uh, all powered by OpenStack, right? So that's another alternative. Take a look to that, investigate, uh, homework. And with that, um, so this is the website, the marketplace uh, that it was just released uh, two days ago. Uh, and um, with that, thank you. And um, remember, OpenStack Cisco, we're hiring people, and open to questions. Thank you. Hello, yeah. So I'm the OpenStack package maintainer in Debian. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've taken some notes on what you, you just said. And I uh, have some, OK, I do not agree with all of what you said. Like, um, we, well, we're talking about free software here. And uh, to me, one of the key important things that we have to keep in mind is, how can I contribute? Uh, we have um, the culture in OpenStack that we all should upstream everything and that we should share our code, OK? Uh, I'm disappointed that, that the current state of things right now is that it doesn't, it doesn't also happen with 
distribution and packages. Um, so I think that one of the key things that s people should um, keep in mind is how can I contribute? Is it easy to contribute back to the distribution? And um, also another point is that currently we have distributions equal vendor equal support. And I think all the slides that you uh, displayed here take that as a, a fact, okay, that the distribution that is going to provide me the, the OpenStack deployment system is also going to be the one that is going to provide me support. Uh, I'd like things to change and that things doesn't stay this way. Um, so that uh, I think that one of the key points when you select a distribution is that the person providing support for you is distribution agnostic and can and then after you can select the distribution you want should i so you so that the, the person that provide you support is not married with the distribution so sorry so, to sorry to interrupt you i um so the people behind telling me it's, it's nine for it, so we need to move to the next session. So it seems like more like a conversation to, uh, a straight question. So uh, I don't want to, to close it here. Let's talk outside. Let's let's. Uh, yeah, but I want to share. <coughs> you've talked no, it's, a it's, lot. It's, okay. I think it's. I think it's actually. You've got really good points, and I think the the key point you're trying to make is this is community driven software. It's community enabled software. While what we were trying to provide everybody with was a view of how you might leverage this, these tools in going into a production environment, um, always consider how you can contribute back. Right? I think that was effectively your key point. This is something that only grows and only gets better if people don't just sort of hide it off in a silo in a corner somewhere and say, well, I'll get somebody to support it and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Right? I think that's absolutely key. There are going to be people that do need that, exactly that kind of system. They're looking for a set of tools and they want to move, that, move, move from that set of tools to something, to something next. Right? So uh, with that, thank you very much. Yeah, they're, they're, they're <laughs>